And they're just in time for the next discussion of the day. This is on youth and politics, starts, which starts now. My name is Ram Maguko. Thank you very much for keeping it Y254. It is a pleasure having you right this time. Make sure that you participate with us in this discussion on politics. This morning, it's all about the BBI politics. It's all about BBI. And uh, BBI now is in the counties. So far... 11 counties have endorsed the Constitutional uh, of Kenya uh, Amendment uh, Bill 2020 with only one county, that is Baringo County, rejecting the proposed constitutional changes. Now, some 13 more counties are needed uh, to hit the magic 24 to propel the constitutional amendment process to the next stage uh, and route to the referendum. Now, according to Honorable Raila Amolo Odinga, he calls this Tuesday a super Tuesday. 30 <coughs> counties are going to vote. Campaign is fast moving towards this 24-county constitutional threshold with all eight assemblies in Uhuru's uh, uh, Mount Kenya backyard also passing the bill. So far, in regards to the bill, we are expected, uh, we, we expect to see lots of uh, many county assemblies discussing this bill this week. We shall have county assemblies discussing this bill tomorrow. Some county uh, 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 assemblies discussing it on Wednesday. Remember, uh, Hondo Morala Amondo Odinga said uh, that he is optimistic that by Tuesday, which he calls Super Tuesday, by Tuesday, uh, more counties will have, will have approved the bill and uh, he expects that we will have re reached the tr threshold of 24. That's right, 24. So far, we have 11 that have uh, uh, so far accepted or approved to this bill. What do you think? Is it going to be a Super Tuesday? Is it going to be a day that we will see 24 count assemblies approving this bill? Time will tell. Give us your thoughts in regards to this. The hashtag, as always, is Y2, uh, Y in the morning at Y254 channel on Twitter at Ram Agukov. Joining me to discuss this, I am with Meshak Ocheno, the CEO of Youth Awake Youth Initiative. Karibu sana, Meshak. Thank you so much. I'm glad to be here. Uh -huh. and to my extreme left, I'm joined by Hon... Uh, I will say Honorable later. Get ready or do it. Fine. <laughs> A political strategist and governance and youth development expert. Karibu sana, Ken. Thank you very much. Uh, I said Honorable because Ken has some desires. Yeah. What are, what are these desires? Wabi wa Kenya. They are aspirations. <laughs> yeah. And I'm glad that, thanks for your prayers, we uh, call it by faith and action. Receive it. You see, already when, uh, eh, when you're ready, that what is wished for uh, always comes into fruition. It, it, it's possible that you can receive what you believe in. What you believe in and uh, what, what others also wish unto you. Yes. yes. You're vying for a parliamentary seat? A parliamentary seat in Butula constituency, Butula. Busia County. Busia County? Yes. 2022? 2022. Do you see it coming? The time is coming. The, the, time, the time is here. See <laughs> parliamentary seat? <laughs> parliamentary seat. <laughs> now, um, let's talk about the BBI. Since it is now, it has now hit the uh, county <coughs> assemblies, so far we see many county assemblies discussing this particular document tomorrow mm -hmm. and yeah. uh, others discussing it on Wednesday. Yeah. During the newspaper review segment, we had a discussion. We, talk, we, we mentioned different county assemblies. Uh, yesterday, Meru County yeah. in particular, uh, 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 the, the speaker, they say that they are the, the speaker said that they're prepared to pass the bill. And let me quote what the speaker said. That is, uh, uh, th that is the speaker of Meru County, majority the, the majority leader of Meru County, that is uh, Victor Karidi. He said that, and I quote, it will be unfair to the people of Meru if the assembly dropped the bill. We shall therefore work closely with the, uh, uh, with the other leaders mm -hmm. to have the bill passed. And I quote, mm -hmm. that is what he said. Mm -hmm. And this is where I would like us to, to start from. People working so that the bill can be passed. Yeah. Uh, let me start with you, Ken. Do you see this move as a right move, especially for 
MC for MC is that people have to work so that that bill has to be passed. And what work module should should, should we uh, be, be looking forward to that is actually legally uh, that is actually legal and a work module that that does not contradict or convene mm -hmm. the constitution? Because so far we are seeing county assembly saying that they have done public participation, mm -hmm. which some members of the public say that no, they have not seen any public participation taking taking place. So. They, they say that they are working to pass the bill. My greatest motivation, other than my vision for aspiring to become an MP, is motivated by the gap that exists in leadership. That gap is being demonstrated now. You look at BBI. The core duty of legislators is representation. So before you present any views, in the county assembly or the national assembly, in this case the county assembly, mm -hmm. you are supposed to have a conversation with the people who elected you. Through public participation. Through public participation. Mm -hmm. Organized at the ward level, at the village level. So when you hear, when we hear stories about speakers, about the right honorable, the president, MCS being coalesced and, and summoned in some places, when you hear statements like, we will work together with other leaders, mm. it's supposed to be, we will work together with the people. Yeah. So that the MC is supposed to sit with the people, have conversations on BBI, and the respective people in those wards are supposed to take a position. So mm. that when the MC goes to the ward, to the county assembly, they have a position of the people. No, but they, sh they should be working together with other leaders based on the per perception that it is on the floor of the assembly. Thereby mm -hmm. meaning that it is other leaders, leaders will be discussing this document. As a representative of the people, before I sit on the table with other leaders, mm -hmm. I'm supposed to, when I go to <coughs> sit on the table with other leaders, I'm supposed to represent the views of my people. So uh -huh. when, as an MCA, you've not had a conversation with your people. Whose views are you representing on that table with other leaders? Mm -hmm. Do you see it um, uh, coming to pass Super Tuesday? Super Tuesday, it was Super will, Saturday, will, everything. Will, For me, it's just, super? it's just a, <laughs> it, there's nothing super about it because there's no magic in it. Yeah. These, the outcomes are predetermined and mm -hmm. that's why people are having those mm -hmm. mm -hmm. so that we just it's just an endorsement mm -hmm. so at the end of the day for me there's nothing there's no hype about it mm -hmm. those things are going to pass because mm -hmm. bbi is a power mobilization strategy mm -hmm. for the big fish mm -hmm. and that's all that is going to be so mm -hmm. there will be no super that is guaranteed Honorable Odinga said and i quote get ready with your vote because super tuesday is coming where we are going to get 24 counties approving the bill and help us move to the next level. Will we reach that 24 county, th th that number? I actually wanted to talk about something before I, 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 I address your question. Mm. Uh, when, we talk ab when he talks about uh, BBI as being just a power structure, you know, for power only, I, I want us that as we are having a national discourse like this on a national television, um, then we are able to robustly inform the normal monanchi of what BBI is so that we just don't re reduce a nine you know point document mm. um, to just being power. I think there are a lot of goodies that comes with the BBI even though I am not a BBI proponent but I must be fair to the document that it has a space for youths. Um, talk about uh, you know you know um, the Talk about youth participation, even in terms of uh, national politics. Talk about how this BBI is going to re revolutionize the economy, even though it doesn't talk about economy, but it has policies uh, in itself that is going to revolutionize an economy mm. to empower young people to become innovators. Mm. So there are, there are other significant you know, uh, um, goodies that is coming with the BBI. However, when we talk about um, the Super Tuesday, um, I mean, it is going to be super. Like I said uh, in the newspaper review section, that this entire process has been incentivized, right? And all the key stakeholders have been put together to ensure that the entire process is passes, whether it's, it's going to ensure that other people are suppressed or, you know, other people fully participate. And so that is why when they talk about other leaders in the current dispensation the constitution the 2010 constitution it says the will of the majority prevails 
what, what do you mean when you say that it will ensure that other people are suppressed and other people are not suppressed? Because obviously... What do you mean by suppression? Because obviously, when you hear the talk, uh -huh. it's directed towards the BBI passing. But the Constitution gives you the latitude to let the people think about it, whether they want to pass the, the, the BBI or they don't want it anymore. But you see, when the public... When the public, when what is outside there to the public is that BBA must pass, then essentially you are suppressing the ideas of the people who think that the BBA in itself is not sufficient to give us, you know, speaking, an ideal democracy. Speaking of, of, of ideas, Honorable uh, Raila said that uh, I want to tell those opposed to the initiative not to change their mind. Let them prepare for the referendum. It's coming and it's unstoppable. And this is, this is now what I have to say before you bring in mm. um, my friend. Uh, when you talk about let those who are opposing the BBI to wait for the referendum, I agree. Referendum is a yes, no, you know, um, electoral process. But are you giving a robust civil participation so that people understand what BBI is? Or are you just you know, uh, putting people to the masses of referendum just because you want your yes to pass. They will and then you want there is no. public participation, my uh, But I'm saying it's not robust. I am saying it's not enough. Ram, you sit here <laughs> at the studio. You're probably not attached to what is happening on the ground. I'll tell you the normal Mamamboga cannot interpret the BBI. The normal Wanjika on the ground cannot understand BBI. It's, the BBI is probably dominating at the executive. So we are saying, look, Get to Mamamboga, let them understand what BBI is, so that when you get to the referendum space, they are able to make informed choices. And then don't tell us that the BBI must pass. Give us the latitude that we are given in the Constitution. Your response to what he said? Before I respond to that, I think I want to... He mentioned something about power. Uh. And went ahead to say empower. So that is a self-contradiction. Mm -hmm. In empower, there is power. Mm -hmm. BBI is supposed to empower people. Yes, that is, that is based on the content that is written there. But who has guarantees in terms of empowerment? Mm -hmm. There they are different categories of beneficiaries of BBI. There is the political and there is the civilian. Yeah. So when you look at the political benefits, they have timelines. But the, for, the, for the public benefits, mm -hmm. they are the mass of parliament mm -hmm. and, the le and the executive. Mm -hmm. That's why most of them are legislative and policy mm -hmm. that are best driven purely by goodwill, goodwill. the political goodwill. Mm -hmm. So back to on, on, the, on the issue of public participation, you mentioned <coughs> that there is public participation. I was lucky or less. Do I say lucky or unlucky? Yeah. <laughs> 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 well, it depends on the context. Yeah, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Even with my own reservations against BBI, yeah. Yeah. I, I attend some of these forums yeah. just to get a yeah. perspective. Yeah. You go to this forum so that maybe you the get... The public participation forum. Yes, forum. public participation. The so-called oh. public participation forum. Uh -huh. At least with the hope that uh, you'll get something. I that love you the term seen. the so-called public participation <laughs> forums. Because then it tells you that nothing happens there. No, he has not said... <laughs> Thank you for he, captioning that. No, no, he, he has not no, said I nothing has happened. Have you said nothing has happened? <laughs> no, no, but he said the so-called public participation. That is not uh, a name that you give to a robust process. So, so, oh, sorry. To, sorry for... So, it, so yeah. what happened there? I want to underline that one. Yeah. So-called. Yeah, okay. Uh -huh. I attended with the hope that I could see. I, I read the document, I read the report, not once, not twice. So I go to these forums with the hope that I'll see or hear something that I have not seen in the, in the, in the yeah. document. Yeah. So I got there, I was given, there's something they call the media pack, the simplified one, which in my opinion is almost a direct, has some elements of opposi op oppositeness. Yeah. There's information there that is not even in the, in the Constitution Amendment Bill, as well as in the report. So I'm there seated there, we are given the media pack. When you read the media pack, there are a lot of, they focus more on battling the misconceptions mm -hmm. and rebuttals, as opposed to selling the ideas the in ideas, BBI. Yeah. My point is, when you're doing sensitization, and I go back to what he said, instead of telling people to wait at the ballot, give them the information create an open forum where people can have conversations so that when you're selling something, focus on the positives, sell your points. Don't focus on handling misconceptions. People are supposed to, vo they vote based on a cost benefit analysis. That's what we should focus on. Okay. So what I saw at uh, Givanti Gardens 
was people coming together, mm -hmm. the organizing, organizers having a small presser, and then as the conversation was supposed to start, the so-called sensitizees, the people who had come to attend that forum, demanded for seating allowance. Because that is what has been those happening. Are, this those is. are attending the public participation. The people who are supposed to be sensitized on BBI <laughs> were told <laughs> they are supposed to be paid. Because that's what has been happening. They said, how different are we? So, so did it take place? It never took place. When the organizer came and he tried to, ex to explain how he is just volunteering himself, even <laughs> the publication, the guys walked out. Are you going to tell me that that's now a national conversation on such a serious issue like a constitutional amendment? But is, is, that, is, is that a fault of the person who came to sensitize the Kenyans? So is it a fault of the Kenyans who wanted a city allowance for them to be sensitized? It's a fault of the proponents of BBI. How? Because you see, there is a process. It's like, it's like when, when I, 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 I come and I, and I call you for, for lunch, and uh, I have asked you, come my brother, Let's let's have lunch. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you come, you will you, you you ask, is there going to be kuku? And then I said no, <laughs> kuku itakuwa, but it's lunch. I love them. Then I'm not coming. Mm -hmm. If if Kenyans mm -hmm. who are supposed to be sensitized in a meeting mm -hmm. at, come to the meeting and then they say, is there going to be sitting allowance? So the because, intention because the sitting is, allowance is, is not yeah. there, they don't attend that yes. public participation. How is the fault of the proponents of the BBI? The fault of is with the proponents of BBI because of the way it was packaged. And then you have an idea that has some quarters of the society opposing it. But and it's, instead, it's, it's a whole meal. See, it's a whole yeah. meal. <laughs> it's a whole meal. Instead, you, you, you want chicken specifically, but if the chicken is not there, you forgo the whole meal. And that's why I'm telling you, if you have no intentions, you see, it goes, I, let me use this example. Uh, you take me out, you've taken me out a few times mm -hmm. and you've been eating chicken. The first time, the second, you take someone out on a date, first time, second time, third time, the fourth time, they're expecting that. They may still eat whatever you offer, but with the reservations. <laughs> the problem, the problem, the re and the reason why I put the blame on the proponents of BBI is because of the way this thing has been choreographed. The, the way it's been choreographed. You, you, you agree with that? There's, um, a lot of, there's a lot of mystery ar around it. And then, instead of coming out, like I said, when you're selling a product, focus on the value of the product to the people. The solution it the offers. Solution. Do not focus on whatever contradictions are being provided by your competitors. Ram, this is what I think. You see, the reason why Y254 called us here, I believe, uh, is because Y254 believed that we could filter information, digest, mm -hmm. and add value. Mm -hmm. We didn't come to repeat what others are saying on the street. Mm -hmm. And so you ask yourself the question, how did we get ourselves here? How did we get ourselves to a point where we have to discuss BBI? First of all, why are we even having BBI? At the point of independence, I mean, I mean freedom fighting, and when we gained our independence, um, the people who were given the government by that time did not understand what the freedom fighting was all about. So they were watchdogs that were given the government by that time. And then you quickly ran to 2005, and then you realize that after the promulgation of that constitution before 2010, the people who took over after the 205 constitution did not also understand what it was. And so is 2010. Pause there. Tell us what, what you think. You'll continue with that analogy. <laughs> <laughs> That's a strong one. Yeah. The hashtag is why in the morning. Give us your thought about this as we continue with this conversation on the BBI. Let's take a short break. We'll be back in a bit. Do not go too far. It is why in the morning, as always, it's a pleasure having you. Uh, we are dis uh, uh, discussing the Building Bridges Initiative and the politics that are there. It is now in the county assemblies. We have 11 county, assemb county assemblies that have approved of it. We need 13 more. One county assembly has rejected it. Will we get to Super Tuesday? That is the question today. Now, we post a question on our Facebook page. Go to Y254 on Facebook and uh, drop us your comment uh, on Facebook. And uh, the question is, 
if you are a member of county assembly in a county, if you are a member of county assembly, how would you vote in regards to BBI? If you were a member of county assembly, how would you vote in regards to BBI? Make sure that you drop in your comments as uh, we continue with this conversation. I don't know if, do we run the, the, the comments now? Am I to, to, uh, but I, okay, let's, let, let's take a look at what people have said uh, on this. If you are an MCA, would you, okay, that, th these are some of the feedback there. I'm seeing, uh, okay, okay. Uh, I, I, I can't understand, but uh, let me just use my phone. A man, James, is saying, welcome uh, to Kenya where our leaders only think of themselves. Very poor leadership, greedy ones. How can the MCS say no when they are eagerly waiting for the two million car grant and they will gr greatly regret their decision afterwards? That is what a man, James Anasama, the car grant. I remember you guys will say, you keep We'll talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> Thomas uh, Hamisi, a.k.a. Loverboy, Anasama, good morning. Vincent Wambua, locked in. A man, James Anasama, I'm certainly, uh, I'm certainly sure this MCS vote yes for something they don't understand. Mm -hmm. Just because of car grants, they, car grant, he calls them bribes. They're all assenting the document. Sure. OT Senge, uh, and I said, I won't vote because the BBI has nothing to do with the environment. All I see is uh, about pub one and politics. All want, all, all want from BBI is a rule, a rule that only government environ, environment. Okay, so you have in Apple. Look at the industrial waste, which has caused a lot of damage in the global, uh, globally. Oceans, lakes, and rivers have now been made industrial waste storage sites. Imagine how many aquatic lives are dead. Even uh, come 2030, if we will not act, you will find that my uh, many animals and plant species will no longer be there. And by the way, we should plant trees so that we... Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> BBI is BBI. Uh, if it will create rule for the environment... Politics, politics, politics. Okay. <laughs> so, on the we should focus. To attend a BBI, you focus on the environment. <laughs> All right. That is, a, that is OT. Thank you very much. That is a, quite an interesting view there. Ken Murimi, and I said, morning to, good morning to. Uh, no, BBI, until our economy comes uh, uh, gets better and our Kenyans settle the mines due to the curse from locusts mm. and corona. Mm. Uh -huh. Uncle Dennis Maina Nasema Hodi Hodi Bila Shakani Uncle Deno Tokea Kerita UG County uh, watching the show with my mom Eunice Maina. Thank you very much, uh, Uncle Dennis. Uh, Salimia, uh, you know your mom. Uh, squared Ayano Anasema uh, Iano Anasema No, I have not seen it. I'm just seeing it being mentioned on TV. <laughs> Yes, my point. Well, exactly. It's ground is different. It's different, and you can see people are responding to it. <laughs> <laughs> Henry Mwangi, I would vote no because there is no money for striking doctors. The issue of, of doctors yeah. also is, is, uh, is there. Chan, <laughs> Channing, a man, and I say, uh, so if money is given to doctors, will you support the BBI? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> now it, it, it became a tete a tete. Henry, and I say, it seems we are moving in the right direction, but correct, currently the. Uh, where they get money is from the BBI. Dennis Wa Mukwijit, and I say, good morning, watching from Kapenguria. Bra Bramwell uh, Boke Keti, and I say, CBD following. Happy birthday to me. All right. Bramwell, happy birthday to you. Thank you very much for keeping it. Y254. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. How old are you now? <laughs> <laughs> Thomas Hamisi, aka Lava Boy, and I say, good morning. Peter Kanriro Kijana Wa. Um, Digital, yes, and he will vote for the BBI. Wow, so many things. We cannot sample all your feedback, but make sure <coughs> that you keep commenting. Yeah. Before we went for, on, on that break, uh, yes. you were saying something. Yes. 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 Uh, so, Ram, I was just trying to connect to how we got ourselves here. Mm -hmm. Why are we having BBI? And I was saying that after we attained our freedom, our independence, the people who took the leadership mantle did not understand what freedom meant and what independence meant by that time. And then we fast track to 2005 and 2010. Actually, the 2010 constitution, uh. when we, as the people, 
supported the 2010 constitution. We looked at it as being a document that will help us you know, develop a society that we all wanted, an architecture of a new nation. And then yet since 2010 to 2021, this document has faced the worst of time in terms of implementation. Then the question is, are we facing a constitutional crisis or a leadership crisis? Are we having shortages of implementers or policies? One of the things that we are very good at doing in this country is creating policies that work. But one of the things that we're also very poor at is implementing those policies. Are we having the right figures to implement those policies? So, but, so but, but, what we are looking at, Ram, uh -huh. is not basically a constitutional crisis. I am still... I am still a champion of the 2010 constitution. We have not implemented that constitution robustly. We cannot therefore just gloss over and say that we have identified the gap when the gaps that are there are probably said to be on the executive. How does that even get back to a normal monanchi? You've just read on the commentary section of oh. this show and you realize that they don't understand anything about the BBI. Someone said that uh, Anasuke took a TV. Exactly. So probably they're even hearing this discussion. This is the first time they're hearing about BBI. So it's not about BBI. It's about what the normal monanchi is feeling on the ground, what the mamamboga is lacking, what the doctors are lacking, the, the, the public debt that we have. We are saying address that first. Don't use our money to run your agenda, to flag your agenda through, and then we still stick with the same problem. Uh, I, I want us to touch on other, other issues. I don't know if, if, if you have a, a, you know, um, a, a, a reply to what he has said or to what uh, the viewers have said. If not, then I want us to touch on something else. you have a reply? I think what I would like to throw in is the fact that he mentioned something. We, have a, we do not have a constitutional crisis, but a leadership crisis. And that's the same thing I always mention. Mm -hmm. In 2010, we had a problem that needed a constitutional amendment, amendment and review. We did, we, that. we did that. The main objective was transfer power from the leadership, from the executive to the people. Mm -hmm. And we did that. At the moment, the problems we have, we need now to add the, word, the letter EM to power. Mm -hmm. Power is with the people. Now we need to empower them. And that's why we need leaders who can empower people. Do you believe that uh, we don't have a constitutional problem, but a leadership problem? At the moment... For the citizens, we don't have a constitutional problem. We have a leadership problem, part of which we've created. Because just to mention something, because you're moving to the next one. Mm. When we talk of, I always tell people, when we talk of the winner take all, BBI is creating more positions. Personally, I believe the, winner, the solution in BBI to the winner take all is a solution for the politicians, not for the Kenyans. So that when I lose an election and he wins, there's a, there's a way he will accommodate me. Mm -hmm. That does not trickle down to the people. Because it does. It does. The, uh, 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 and let me tell you, the reason why it <laughs> does is because of the handshake. Look at what happened that led us to Harabe, that led us to the, to the steps of Harabe House mm -hmm. that day when we had the handshake. Mm -hmm. We were at... As, uh, and here I'm, I'm talking about facts here, that as a country, we were at a point where we were going to, div to be divided. Chaos was looming, and the handshake brought peace. Mm -hmm. Do you still believe that a leader who is vying for any position does not have the ability to influence the members, the followers, or the Kenyan citizens, who are supporting this leader, if this leader fails to achieve or to get that position, don't you see that the BBI can, do you see that, it, will it solve such a problem that trickles down to the one inch? And that's why I'm telling you, I go back to the point, winners, BBI solves the winner take all for the politicians, so that, and we, I go back to the point he said, a leadership crisis. If we had leadership at the executive level, if we had leadership at the, the legislative level where we can make laws for posterity, if we had leadership at IEBC that people can believe in and trust, we wouldn't need a handshake. 
because we go into elec election knowing that we are the processes are being presided over by leaders who are going to give us oh. re re verifiable results mm -hmm. and that's why the moment people do not have faith in those systems why don't people have faith because of a leadership problem that's what has corrupted the minds of the people to the extent that you only need to induce them and they will be on the streets but if people had confidence in the systems they wouldn't go to the streets. All right. I want, to, I want us to, to talk about something <coughs> else. Okay. But still, touching on that issue aspect of leadership. Mm -hmm. Last week, we had uh, the NASA leaders. We are talking about Honorable Moses Westangula yeah. of Fort Kenya. Mm -hmm. We are talking about Honorable Musela Mudavadi of ANC. We are talking about Honorable Kalonzo Musioka of uh, WIPA. They said, they asked Honorable Rail Odinga to return the favor on grounds that they have supported him in previous presidential elections. Mm. Then you have an entire structure that still tells you that we are creating a space where youths can dynamically rise from top to the bottom. When you have the same people consistently over the years still forming alliances to get power. And these guys are jokers. When you have Kalonzo right now and Mudavadi and, 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 and you know, um, Wetangula coming together and saying that it's not our time, mm. Raila should also support us. They, they, they want him, they, they want Honorable Raila Odinga to also endorse them just as they on, a, a, endorsed him. It's the, not about, I, is, is that a right move? It's not a right move. Why, do, why are they reducing our political power to endorsement? Is it important you're, ba you, you're, you're basically telling me <laughs> that I can't <laughs> rise without endorsements, right? Yes, it is a game of endorsement. I agree. But generally, don't put that as the only thing that can happen. So does Mudavadi or Kalonzo um, or, 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 you know, or Wetangula, don't they believe in themselves setting the standard to stand alone and get the presidency? And by the way, if you ask yourself, so what are the trio bringing on the table in terms of you know, their political aspiration. They know that they, they don't have a muscle, you know, to get the presidency. And that is why they want, um, you know, the support of Raila Odinga. Because if you look at Wetangula, what will he bring? Well, oh, well oh, 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 or, or if you look at even Kalonzo, what will he bring? Wetangula brings a Bakusu, uh, I, mean, uh, I mean Bukusu. You know their voting pattern. When they register 100%, 30% votes, Kamba's votes don't pass 1 million. So whether they form alliances as they are, they're still not going to get the presidency. And this is, and this is the, the, the challenge that I have. Um, uh, uh, let me give you time to, to, to respond to it. Should we look at votes in terms of regional blocks at the end of the day? But, but, but just to, yeah. to, 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 to clarify, they say, yes, they, need, they, 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 wanted, they asked him to endorse uh, uh, yes. To, to endorse them. Yes. But it does. But but they said actually they said that they don't require his nod to bolster their 2022 presidential uh, uh, and, submission. And just before you bring him in, let mm. me give one of my last submission. Mm. And then Raila, in response, said that the honourable um, former prime minister says mm. that I won't endorse people. I won't endorse cowardice. People who left me at the mercy of you know. Uh, the inauguration that was supposed to happen, the people's I president. Let me quote that. He said, those who want to be endorsed now disappeared at the hour of need. At Uhuru Park, I looked around only to find none of them. Let's support BBI because 2022 is yet to come. And then Kalonzo says that he's a senior counsel, that his position does not allow him to involve himself in a dramatic and constitutional process. And by that time, he said, and we can recall, he said that there was a Nigerian number that was not going through. Right? So what kind of inconsistency do you have in the people that we look at as leaders? Ken. Personally, I will ask you a question. Can you compare kukukienyeji na kukuya grade? <laughs> <laughs> in agriculture, in primary, we used to learn about... <laughs> we used to talk about... At the moment, there are only two free-range... There are only two free-range political chickens. Yeah. Chickens in Kenya. Kukukienyeji na grade. Gani ni kienyeji? Sasa, kuna kukumbili za kienyeji. The free-range. And that is Raila Odinga and William Ruto. Have you ever seen Moses Wetangula outside Bungoma unless he's attending a funeral somewhere? 
have you ever seen Musalia Mudavad outside mm -hmm. the Higa or Kakamega farthest? Mm -hmm. How do you become what do you mean if we have ever seen them outside Bungoma or Vihiga? What do you mean? Clarify that. You see, to become the president, there are forty seven counties. There are one thousand <coughs> or one thousand four hundred and something wards. Uh -huh. To become the president, you must have the the power and the energy and the motivation and the drive in you to go to every corner of this country. You cannot spend the past 15 years roaming around one county and expect someone to endorse you. That cannot happen. And that's why when you see Raila Odinga standing up and saying he cannot endorse anyone, yeah. Raila Odinga is among the few, let me say, at, um, among the existing political class that are aspiring for the president, that, that have the caliber of, the presi of a presidential candidate. Yeah. He's the guy who's walked around this country more than anyone else. The only other person who come, comes next to him is William Root. The rest of the other guys can only play second fiddle to, to the two. Yeah. And to go back to, to point something that he said. <laughs> I know he's reduced that, that, it to... That <laughs> comparison. No, you see, the, 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 but, but the, it's, the it's the reality. It's the reality. Those the broilers, they have like a small confinement where they can... <laughs> Even if you open the door, they'll never leave that. They'll never leave that room mm -hmm. where they have They're been conditioned to live. To, yeah. So that's what I'm talking about. Kalonzo has been confined, has confined himself to Kambani. <coughs> Wetangula has confined himself to Bungoma. Mudavadi has confined himself to Malulu. Every day you see on, <laughs> on, on Facebook meeting elders in Malulu. Meeting. <laughs> Every day, that's what you see. So when you have such people... Eh? They are not like the 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 Kienyeji chicken that is just waiting for dawn for so, it to so, step So Honorable Ruto is not confined, and Honorable Raila is also not confined. They are not confined, and that's why most of them spend more time outside their strongholds. But, but it's see, Ram. Okay. Yeah, and, and before he jumps yeah. in, yeah. there is something I wanted to point <coughs> out. You see, we've gotten to a point where these guys are, let's say, there are collisions amongst them. Mm -hmm. And that's where I see it's the opportunity for the young people to step up. Mm -hmm. Whenever, you see, leadership gaps are being created. Mm. We have a failed legislature. What are we doing as young people to fill up those gaps? Or are we just sitting back and waiting? We are vying for political yeah. seats. So, and that's why as young people, we need to step up now. <coughs> with all this confusion, with all these scandals, it's far much easier to sell yourself as an alternative now you don't know you have a campaign after yes some of these people that <laughs> some of these people that you talking about Trump, uh -huh. the Calonzo group they began they joined the government when they were youths but apparently right now they are they are preoccupying that space to a point that if you are youth you will not even think about the national leadership this is a cocoon of jokers do you know that when Calonzo ceased to be the vice president he didn't know how much it costed to drive come on from to, to drive look how much it costed to drive from nairobi to mombasa you know you're talking he, about a national league. i know he you're thought it was twenty thousand no you're because the man has been cruising on public expense and takes Mesha, things for granted Mesha, you're talking about a national lead i know who has been uh, uh who has held offices in government in for, for, for years. It doesn't matter. Why would you refer to them as a joke? It doesn't matter. I mean, it doesn't matter. So, have we seen development in that aspect? What kind of a leader have you been? Very inconsistent from if, your, if he from, from your he, conversations, he, he from your talking. He wouldn't the votes he's getting. It's if, not about the voting. And you just said right in this you, show that it's about... You know, you know, you know the voting patterns. But you said right the in, regional votes. You said right in this show that it's about the people. He is saying that for you to even get an overwhelming vote, you don't need to constrain yourself to a given environment. Uh -huh. You move to be, you need to be a moving object. So are we looking at a moving object? And by the way, it's not even about voting. It's about national development. Have these people steered development for over the years that they have been in the government? So we are looking at a more critical issue than just forming alliances of old people in the government. And I think that brings me to my question. These people have been in power for all those years. The first question we need to ask, how did they get into those positions? Most and of them, and let me try to answer myself, most of them entered those government positions through tokenistic means. 
most of them are hand-picked individuals into those positions. Most of these people. These are people, if you are to ask today, <coughs> what did you do to warrant that position? What would you tell Kenyans is what you've done to warrant the position you're looking for? Are people aware, without a history. Are you, are you aware, based on the history of the nation, some of these people that you're talking about, you, you, that, that you mentioned they are hand-picked, some of them have gone through, uh, have been de detained, have fought and struggled to get the country this particular constitution that we are trying, trying to change. Nelson Mandela, Nelson Mandela, yes, strived for his country throughout the apartheid regime and they attained independence as South Africa. Went for the presidency for five years uh -huh. and then retired. What makes these jokers not think about retiring of the politics? Because Nelson Mandela believed in an environment where other leaders could rise and, and, you know, and take their place and speak to the occasion. So when you are probably giving examples, I want you to compare and contrast. Don't just be one-sided. Just because we had somebody detained in Kenya, we also had somebody detained in South Africa. We are in the same continent. But they've given leadership space to other young rising stars to we showcase their we, skills. We have youths in parliament. On the we have the Kenya young parliamentarians. We have people, who, in fact, we have people like Honorable Johnson Sakaja, who on is the, the chair. On the contrary, for me, I think I would like to yeah. take deviation from what he said about these old men. Okay, they are old men. I was specific. <laughs> we have a majority of people who are running around today who's who've med benefited from the tokenism in the government, who've ascended to positions without any special warrant for the same. So my deviation, personally, I believe it does not matter whether someone is 100 years or he's 20 years, as long as he can lead. I'll always give an opportunity to that person to lead. So, and that's the problem we have today. The main reason why the young leaders, elected leaders, like the one you mentioned, Sakaja, cannot inspire people, it's because they did not become leaders on their own terms. They did not ascend to those positions in their own way. <laughs> and I go back to what I say, tokenism. And that's why we have people who as brilliant <laughs> as Sakaja who are confined. Horrible Sakaja. Is I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't want to assume that Sakaja didn't you know, uh, get himself the leadership. Uh, me... uh, we are on a national television. <laughs> I wouldn't want to touch on that. <laughs> but basically what I would want to be specific about when he talks about, you know, um, I don't mind, and these are his words, <laughs> whether you were 90 or 100, I would still support you if you can lead, is that the other aspect of leaders is when they are able to create opportunities for other, other people. people. So I think there is something I had not finished before I was <laughs> interrupted. Yes, yes, yes. What I wanted to say is that, and I think you missed yeah. the point because... Because uh, yeah. you interrupted yeah. me. What I wanted to say is that the reason why I mentioned, for example, Sakaja, he's not here to, because you mentioned him, yeah. is... is I, I mentioned it because he's a young parliamentarian. He's a young parliamentarian. Yes. And my point was, most of these young parliamentarians have good intentions and good ideas, but they are confined in our political structures. The parties cannot allow them to do some of those things. The political leaders cannot allow them to do some of those things. And that's why I said they did not become leaders under their own terms. Because as a, as, as a leader, you should be in a position to at least do something that you believe in, irrespective of your, your affiliation. Um, I, I, I believe you are aware that we, we, we have this, um, this, this, this mock mm -hmm. parliament. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've seen it. Mm -hmm. A mock parliament for the youths. Honorable Sakaja is there. ANC Youth League spokesperson Nathaniel Mongari Akadima is there. And he is the speaker of this parliament mm -hmm. where we have youths who can have parliamentary sessions, mm -hmm. discuss issues of national value, mm -hmm. and come into conclusions on these issues. And it's taking place led by the Kenya Young Parliamentarians. What do you mean when you say that they are not inspiring you? Let me ask you yeah, a question. This is Let me ask you a question. I was one of the greatest ranters on, online. I mm -hmm. used to complain <coughs> about the government, how the government is not doing what. But then they, one day I called myself into a meeting and asked myself, how much does that ranting, 
How much value does it bring? I want to come back to your question. You can have those assemblies, have conversations and everything, but as long as it cannot be converted into an actionable policy that can be implemented, it's nothing. Mm -hmm. Inspiration goes beyond just talking. Inspiration goes beyond, it's about stepping out of your comfort zone, out of your cocoon, to go to the ground and demonstrate and implement things. And that is the problem we have today. Impl inspiration is about uh, destroying the barriers okay and getting yeah. out there let's let's talk about barriers then yeah I'll, on, I'll, I'll on friday yes let yes. me touch on something uh -huh. you'll also realize that the young people we have in the parliament uh -huh. cannot basically be useful to the implementation of new ideas because they used party vehicles to get into the parliament i wouldn't even say that they're parties in kenya we don't have parties we have I'll call them fictional constructs that are not based on policies, that are not based on ideologies. <laughs> and then they find themselves in those fiscal, I mean, I mean fictional constructs. Uh -huh. And then you want them to deliver in parliament. They can deliver. These no, parties do not have ideologies. No they don't have philosophies. You've opened Pandora's box there. No party in Kenya is actually one that you recognize as an yes. individual. You did you notice in 2017, did you all. notice in 2017, we had a huge number of young people, and actually people at uh, large, uh. going for independent candidature? Speaking of parties, last week it was uh, on Friday, Jubilee Party Secretary General Raphael Tuju asked nominated MCAs from Wasingishu County to approve of this bill uh, 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 or face punishment. <laughs> <laughs> so you see, it means that they're constrained to perform, that you cannot think independently, Ram. This is the perception. This is the perception. We have the, a, a stand of a political party. Uh, I, I, I know you are running uh, for, for, for your parliamentary seat under a political party. Yes, I uh, do. Which party is that? At the moment, I'm a member of IDEP. I, okay. IDEP. Or, it's or, called the... ID IDEP okay IDEP IDEP okay so under IDEP or any party whatsoever yeah there is the stand of the party yes we should be the stand of the members of the party yeah so if the stand of jubilee party is to support BBI and a member of that party does not support the BBI isn't this the right statement that can come out of a secretary general of that particular party and I think that's, what, that's why I need to point out this. And that's where we, when we talk of BBI, where did it start from? It was never the position of the parties. It, is it was the position of two individuals. Who are the leaders of two political parties. Who are the lead leaders of two political parties. Who think they are bigger than the political parties. <laughs> so any decision they make is binding on the membership. <laughs> I agree with you that in any civilized practicing democracy, uh -huh. M members must be whipped around party ideologies. Mm -hmm. But if the parties do not have ideologies, what binds the members? Jubilee party has ideologies. Which ideologies? Is it what does paper? it stand for? It's what can paper. you say? This is the one thing that you believe. <laughs> <laughs> right? It's written on paper, Ram. Uh? It, it's basically a document that even... Remember, Jubilee is right now at the ruling political party. I mean, coalition, probably. They have ideologies and their philosophies, as you say, probably. Why are we not seeing that? Because a, a party is, yes, it is, mm -hmm. but it is a rhetorical question, you don't need to answer it. <laughs> Why are we seeing that? Mm. Because as a party, you need to be aligned to democracy. Mm -hmm. And democracy moves all of us towards the ideal. So implement the ideal, whether at party level or at the national level, and especially when you are in a ruling party, and that's why I to point out, mm. democracy, democracy is supposed to, see, democracy <coughs> to Kenyans is about many political parties. But in real sense, democracy is about having functional structures and parties. Mm -hmm. So that decisions are structured. Someone doesn't just wake up and make a decision on a party. I agree, party loyalty is not negotiable. But that loyalty should be should be centered around ideas and with functional structures. So when you have a party that does not have structures, then it's very difficult for that loyalty to be whipped. 
And especially parties operating under democracy. You are hitting, you're, you're hitting something here. When, when you say that party members should fall in line with the party position, when you vie for a political seat under a certain party, you will vie for a political seat under that party based on the ideologies that party has. Jubilee has a manifesto. When they were talking, uh, when they were campaigning, there was a manifesto. There were ideologies of Jubilee. And these are the ideologies that still stand till date. It is also on paper. When an, a member of county assembly is whipped into doing what the party, what the party wants, how does that um, uh, afflict his democratic rights, yet he is confined under the same, same house of Jubilee? It is like saying, if you're, if you're married, you're married mm -hmm. to your wife, mm -hmm. saying that you are not allowed to go out with other women then is against your democratic rights as a human being, yet you have a constitution of marriage to your wife. Let me understand. Let me come in. I think it's never happened in the history of democracy world over. I don't have monopoly of such knowledge. But I've never seen anywhere with, where a leading, a ruling political party with a near absolute majority in parliament goes into an alliance with the opposition. A political party, it only happens when the, the, the ruling party does not have, and that's what happens. That's why those are the coalitions we see in, in Europe, you, in you, France. You, in, you, don't, you don't see like the, the peace of the country. Now, was I'm, at coming stake. Back, I'm coming back to your point. Mm. Personally, I believe the peace, the peace that we talk about is just a creation of the mind. Kenyans are very peaceful unless <laughs> they are incited by someone. Yeah. Under their own accord, Kenyans will live peacefully with each other. I come back to the married, to the, the woman you talked about, the man who, who, needs, who feels that his rights are infringed by going out with other women. Mm. We have a husband who is married happily. Eh? He has his family. Mm -hmm. eh? He has even, where he come from, there are those people who even take other people's dead wives. They, 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 <laughs> when someone dies, you can take someone else, you can inherit. The issue of inheritance. So you see, the Jubilee as a party with their party leader, President Uhuru Kenyatta, have a very strong party with a near absolute majority that can pass any law. Mm -hmm. Then he has inherited another wife like in the form of Kanu. You see, those, the P, uh, UDA was here, PDP something like that before. And the first wife have, has allowed you to do that. And then you step up and go the take the neighbor's wife hmm? without consulting you, your, mm -hmm. your first wife. That's the issue that is happening. So those are the disgruntlements that are in Jubilee. A case of someone who has a functional a system that is supposed to be very functional. And that's why I tell you, when you talk of development and all that stuff, with an absolute majority in parliament, nothing stopped the Jubilee government from implementing whatever project they're implementing in Kisumu. I don't think the people in Kisumu would have demonstrated to stop the Jubilee government from doing what it's doing I after think, the handshake. I, th I, think, I think we are having a very serious discussion. And right now, we probably have thousands of audiences that are watching what we are saying. Um, I wouldn't want to fix myself into his thoughts when it comes to uh, what it means, the government coming together with the opposition. We must, all of us, agree that we had a situation. We had a very critical situation in 2017. And, and the government agreeing to come together with the opposition party and shake hands, you know, um, was a very big step towards the peace of this country. And so can we now achieve devolution? Because then we can see the president going around the country and inspecting projects. Peace is fundamental to any country's development. This one, I must say. So, and so whether, I don't care whether we are going to have 10 parties shaking hands or whether the government is going to shake hands with you know, um, the opposition. But that doesn't then limit the opposition to implement its mandate as provided by the Constitution. We still need the opposition to be strong and legislate and, and talk about matters that the I mean, put go the government Let me ask in you a two roadmap. questions. Let me ask you two questions. The first one, what is the purpose of democracy? Mm -hmm. If I we can't have a functional and dependable 
electoral system. What is the purpose of democracy going to an election if we are going to an election only for all these people to coalesce and come together so that they talk the same tune? The second question, <laughs> how, <laughs> all right. how, can, how can the opposition mm -hmm. oversight the government mm -hmm in which it has its own appointments, opera appointed so, so, people operating so in. So you believe for an election <laughs> to be an election, people have to disagree? An election is about disagree agreeing to disagree. Mm -mm. And that's why mm -mm. we agree to disagree. Mm -mm. You will. Why am I saying that? Uh -huh. Because when you go to the ballot, there are two people. Mm -mm. We agree to disagree that you have a right to vote for whomever. Mm -mm. Right. And both of us must. And that's why I usually say, mm. politics, any competition is a zero-sum game to the competitors. <laughs> you cannot go, I cannot win a football match and expect us to share points. Uh, no, Ken, what we need is a system that guarantees a fair result for both of let us. Let me ask you, there, there, there is this joke that was uh, going around back then when they were saying, um, a riot is not a riot without tear gas. Tear gas. Do you believe that? Ram, I don't believe Ram, that. Ram, Ram, <laughs> let, let me consistently that. speak that if Ken is a young leader, leader that you're going to expect to take on, you know, the member, the becoming member of parliament with the same ideologies, then this country is not progressive. It is retrogressive. Why let me interrupt you. Let me interrupt you. No, I cannot no, allow I gave, why. I gave you time. I no, gave you no, time. No, no, I, that I, one I, must I, be tackled. Let me ask you. I gave you time. Why that do you one say? must be tackled. I, yes. I, I, gave I, I, give time. Time. Hmm? I gave you time for your submission. Uh, so Meshak, I'm asking you. Give me my you. latitude. I, I'm asking you. Yes. Why? why do you say that the country is not progressive? Because yet he has, he is a youth who has come up reason up to speak his mind i agree and i know so many you youth. see let me let me request for can something I, can, can i please can request I for something just, uh, because there's a point i had not finished he interrupts me that's why he never gets my points can i he never just, gets, and that's I, he's jumping in because i've not finished okay, what finish. i was saying you did not finish okay. when i said yes a competition is a zero-sum game mm. we are competing both of us must agree that i will win or you will win but whoever wins among us does mm. must accept Whoever, wh whoever wins must be ready to serve even the losers. What, and what that's happens, why what happens the, when they don't accept? So the point is, mm. we need to have systems that guarantee fairness in the result. Mm -hmm. And then the problem that we have in Kenya, and that's why I talk of zero-sum games <coughs> among the competitors, the citizens are not competing. So the citizens should never suffer. And that's why if you had listened, you would have gotten this point. It's us who are competing. The citizens have the right to agree whomever to vote for. And it should not change our relationship just because we have different opinions. The problem we have in Kenya <coughs> is that once we agree and we fight, it's like we take the fight to the people who should not participate because they don't even know the motivation behind our, our contesting for those positions. So the problem that we have in Kenya is that people who win or lose, and then they, it's like they take that anger to the people such that I was competing with you, so I'll not serve your people. You see, and that's where marginalization comes in. And that's why you see in this country, there is that problem with development. Development goes to the people who are government friendly. Those are the issues we've been having. So when I talk of zero sum, when I talk of winner take all, it's not about the people, it's about the competitors. We as the competitors must agree that one will win, another one will lose. But whatever the result, the people must not feel the wrath or the difference in our win or lose. And so it, at that is point, it, is it it's that about why? principle. So, These so are principles. The issue of you winning and then you start complaining, that's what I'm trying to This is the tokenism that is being promoted in BBI. Okay. People must accept. So, uh, be But before they accept, we only need a system that guarantees the people, their safety, the progress, the empowerment, and development, regardless of who they vote for or who they don't. I, now, I, I don't know why Ken is getting worked up. We are just <laughs> looking at, really, this discussion um, objectively. And this is what I'm saying. No, you are. I, I, don't, you I, I don't have a problem with Ken becoming whatever he wants to become. <laughs> but I have a problem with the ideologies that he's going to sell in that leadership position with regards to democracy. They are what we call principles of democracy. Democracy allows people to rise to the occasion and compete. And it's called 
we think about a win-win situation. And when you talk about two people competing, democracy is not all about two people. Democracy is all about people who have presented themselves on stage. What if we only have, have two people on the, on the ballot? No, I'm just asking. <laughs> I don't <laughs> need your questions, so let me answer first what Being you into ask. perspective the realities of politics, for that's Ken, what I'm saying. Uh, uh, for, so yes. for Ken yeah. to tell us on a national television that the winner wins and then the loser Accepts. He does accept, and that he doesn't care whether there is conflict. I think that is contradictory when he actually says that he's a champion of 2010 Constitution. Because 2010 Constitution has its demand when it comes to how do you accept when you're not the winner. And Did it has those, the part where I mentioned the has, people. It has those yeah. regulations. Mm. And when you talk about the people, yes. people, as you know, the political context in this country, that people are affiliated to party godfathers. Can that change? I didn't say that it can't change. Can I just, believe it can change. Can you just stop yeah. asking me questions and let me respond? Uh, so I'm just being so real time. Okay, let's do yeah. this. He's yeah. a bit misleading when he says <laughs> no, people no, no. can't change. I, I you know those you, are the narratives. I, 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 I want personally. you now to give him time to, to, to yes. respond. Okay? Uh, give him time to respond. But I'll not allow now. him to mislead the public. I'll come back to you. I'll, I'll not allow him to mislead the public. I'll come back to you so that you can clarify. Yeah, yeah. So I'm basically tending to clarify the tendency of youths developing dogmatic approaches towards you know very critical government um, and, and even leadership issues ken i want you to straight away rethink the 2010 constitution and rethink democracy and not the principles of democracy that while loss is acceptable peace must prevail and whereas peace doesn't prevail then we must find other interventions on how peace can prevail okay. so if that means that we go into a handshake with an opposition for the peace to prevail. So if you talk about the people, do people, uh, are the people, do the people want peace? Yes, they do want peace. And that's and why so they live in peace. To a point where, to a point where we can look for that peace, we are allowed to stretch to that point. Now, let me come now. Uh, time to, now let me give you time to respond, Ken. The first thing I think I want to express my disappointment in his, his assertion <laughs> that just by virtue of Kenyans <laughs> being attached to their political affiliations, political goals, they can't change. That's very wrong. That's very demeaning to the Kenyan people. Just because they are doing this now does not mean they can't change. The second thing I want to insist, yeah. political contests among us, the politicians, should not affect the relationships of the people. And that's why we as the politicians, and that is the basic principle of democracy, the majority have their way. The minority have, have their, their say. say. By saying that, it simply means when we go into a competition, a political con competition does not have a draw. Among us, the competitors. But what we should do as leaders, mm. which I am at the moment, and when I speak this, I speak with authority as a leader, uh -huh. on, we should never allow our political contests to affect the people. You as a person must be ready. As m I'm ready. As a person, even as I'm doing this, I'm telling people, Leadership does not require, it's not a must for me to have a position for me to be a leader. I can still influence as my, long as I stay in that. My question, mm -hmm. Ken, is uh, when you say that you believe <coughs> that for an election to be an election, there has to be disagreements. Uh, exactly. Uh, how, how, how then do you, do you exactly. um, in the same breath, say that uh, where there is democracy, yes. uh, disagreements, th that democracy be, can be established through and, and that Ram, kind before of he just takes on that and that is the entire thing that i don't understand about ken because he has a lot of contorted information and that cannot connect up when you truly say that there must be a disagreement after an election and then you are a champion of democracy we really can't connect the kind of a leader that you are trying to make but can now I to, you, my to you meshak to you meshak i still wonder <laughs> uh, i'll ask a question <laughs> with you when you say within the same breath yes that the leaders that you expect to take the mantle from, you call them jokers. Yes. How do you expect the, uh, those who take the mantle from yeah. you yeah. to also see you? Because you do not um, give honor to those who have come before you. But, but then, How do you expect those who will come after you to but, give but, honor to you? But <laughs> then as a host, I'll send you back and ask you what is the meaning of a joker. And then when you find the meaning, you literally align it to the people that I'm talking about. So that when I, I call somebody a joker, I'm not just calling it from a point of, you know, uh, thinking that they are. It's because of what we've seen them do in the past. And that they have existed in this government 
probably since time immemorial. These and we national, can see development. These are nas so whether national they are, leaders. You see, whether they are national leaders or whether they are international leaders, you see, they're human being. We must tell them the reality. So, so, so holds an office is? in the UN. What? You no problem. Whether they, whether they hold <laughs> an office in heaven, we must just <laughs> let them know what they need to know. Oh, so now, I, let, let me come to I'm you. so passionate okay. about leadership that you can't so, detach me from the realities of leadership. You Tem. see, we don't, leave, we don't lead in vacuums. We must be realists. And I go back to my point. Democracy is about the majority having their way and the minority having their say. For that to function, mm -hmm. we need to focus on creating systems that guarantee the rights and safeties of both parties. Mm -hmm. Why did I say there must be disagreements in political contestations? By virtue of two of us stepping on that stage to contest for a position and having people supporting candidate A and others supporting candidate B. That is the level of disagreement that I'm talking about. You, you are taking, you are, boiling, you are boiling my statements to a point where you think disagreements are war. No, disagreements are ideological. And that's why as a person, I'm pushing for ideological politicking. You see, we, the, one of the biggest problems that we have as a country, and maybe as a continent, is that we, we, we borrowed a culture, we imported a culture. A culture was imposed on us. And I always tell people, we, we, the, you can create the physical infrastructure to implement something. That's very easy. You can go to China and borrow money and build schools, all that stuff. But you cannot buy what I call the intellectual infrastructure to facilitate the implementation mm -hmm. of the culture that we have borrowed. So what we have is a culture where people believe things must be done this way. Right. And there's no alternative. And that's why we're coming for to create an alternative. So when we say it's a contestation, it's not a contestation of guns and all. It's a contestation of ideas. It's about, for example, me, I personally say I appreciate what the others have done within their comfortable capacities. Because no man can operate beyond his capacity. But it's a moment for us to move into the next phase where we can focus on ideas. Ram. And that's why I need to insist, before he comes in, mm. please don't misquote me. When I talk of, <laughs> when I talk of disagreements, <laughs> it's about you in your own family, your wife deciding he will support Ram, and your firstborn son saying he will support me. Those are what I'm talking about. And those things should never spill beyond the election day. Once we go to the ballot, vote whomever you want, vote for Kennedy, vote for Ram. Once we leave there, we go sit at home, wait for the result, knowing that if Kennedy loses, he will go shake Ram's hand, and Ram will ask Kennedy, you had a very good idea, can we work together? And hmm? you are aware that and it, that's it, not it, 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 is, it is because of that, because earlier on you <laughs> disputed the handshake. Now yes, you, you also exactly. interrupted me. And that's why I'm saying, exactly. that's not, you see, the handshake we have today is a forced circumstantial agreement it's forced it's circumstantial mm. uh, you see for, forced due to the fact that we were at the brink of and there was no alternative Ram. at that point i feel Ram. so Thank circumstantial you. because we there are there are things we've we had, we assume a lot of things as kenyans there, there's a way we we intentionally worked there so when i was taking about us it's about we even knowing even before the election mm. that we have it's also your right i have a right to win but i also have a right to lose it's about simple things so Ram. that we don't, we are not forced into a handshake. And, th Ram. and that's why we are here with the BBI. <laughs> yeah, Ram, yes. in my departing submissions <laughs> on this very topic, uh -huh. I want to be very critical and trace to why we are here and why are we even having this, this conversation, conversation about, um, you know, handshake. Um, we heard a lot in 2017. Baby Pendo lost her life. We had people who were butchered and tortured due to an election outcome and so when somebody rampages the fact that there was a handshake between the opposition and the government it, it, it it's it's so it's so it's not pleasing my heart it's not pleasing because for me like i said earlier and i just want to be very consistent in my words mm -hmm. that it doesn't matter whether 10 political parties shake hands as long as we acquire peace that is the biggest point. And when he talks about disagreement, I don't, I'm not talking about guns and shooting and, 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 and people rioting around. I, I, to, to an extent, wait, wait, to an extent, wait, to an extent, 
I agree when you say disagreement in terms of ideology. Yes. But That's I just want focus. you to understand that so the can reason... So you withdraw the, your earlier statement? I'm not withdrawing. So the reason why, the reason why I have to be on your neck is when you say that the handshake was choreographed, was circumstantial, when we had a baby's life lost, when we had people who were butchered, when we actually had an election that was bungled. So why are you saying that an election was bungled for us to have handshake? So lastly, in my submissions, this is what I'm, I have to say. That when we have a rising political figures who want to get into the political ground, like Ken, they, their conscience must be right, they must have a very good ideology, mm -hmm. and they must understand what democracy is. Otherwise, even in the implementation of BBI, if we don't understand the nuggets of democracy, then we shouldn't even be here discussing this thing, first of all. So I think my closing comment on that will be, uh, my yeah. friend, my friend, that. <laughs> my friend, my friend, don't, don't, <laughs> don't give me the burden. <laughs> eh? Please, don't give me the burden. I am sending you to uh -uh. legislate. Let me, let, me uh -uh. let me tell you something. Uh. Please, don't give me the burden of having to interpret common English. I said circumstantial. Circumstantial because there were circumstances that led to the handshake. I agree. The handshake was not an issue of, oh, it wasn't peaceful. It was a coerced sort of thing. That's why you And then saying, that is another hmm? statement that you is very wrong. Coerced. You see, let me tell what you something. What do you mean by being, do you know coercion uh, in itself? Uh, what is the meaning of coercion? Now, let me... How do you say something... How do you say you, that something that is creating a peaceful atmosphere was uh, Can you allow me to explain? I, I, I want us to, to wrap this conversation. <laughs> okay, let me... I want us to wrap this conversation. And you see, uh, please... Uh, I just don't understand this statement. Your statement. And when he says that it was coerced. Okay, be patient when I'm explaining. And that's why it's very difficult for you to understand. Okay, I'm patient. Because you never give me time I'm to... I'm patient. Why was it coerced? Railo Dinga himself, the right honorable, said they sat in a room with Uhuru Kenyatta. For I don't know that so means not stand? talking. No, no, I, 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 I let him finish. Another thing Let's I want to finish. tell you, it's it's if you are not aware, then it's known that there were emissaries where people there were people being sent to Railo Dinga and then these inform there were those behind the scenes conversations. And when I talk of coercion, coercion is not about being held at gunpoint. Coercion is about Railo Dinga had a position as the right honorable prime minister, former and the people's president. There were issues of cessation. They had a position. ODM had a position that they were never ready to see. <coughs> so when I talk of coercion, coercion is not about being hammered with a hammer. And that's why you get me wrong. You are very extreme in your interpretation of my, my statements. Coercion is about you have a position. There are peaceful ways. You see the way you are seduced. Sedu seduction is also coercion. You are peacefully coerced <laughs> into, into vacating your original posi See, there position. Is, there is, and ad adopting there something. There is no way you can put a negative word to be positive. No. <laughs> wherever it exists, whenever, never, wherever you use it. So coercion is a political. Are you, are you aware you are only, you're only English? <laughs> exactly. And, 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 and that's and because I want him as a leader to, to understand the language. Why you know, I mean, it's a, <laughs> look. We should, we should get, <laughs> what do you need to do? Ram. Coercion in Have you ever seen how lawyers interpret every word you see question as an, an, a negative thing no read, read in his context of argument it Isn't is it? how do you put that Let in the man. same statement with the handshake I, I, I want us to wrap this conversation <laughs> how do you do that it, it, why do it, you it, do that it has been a pleasure uh, <laughs> but, but what you're saying um final word uh, you feel are we going to see super yeah. tuesday Getting that 24 number, itafanyika? I mean, they are going to get the 24 numbers, but for me, it's okay. not a super Tuesday. Uh -huh. They are going to get it. Right. I have no doubt about that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. That is Mesha Kotieno, CEO of Awake Youth Initiative, and uh, Kennedy Odueyo, uh, the, a political uh, a strategist, governance, and youth development expert. Gentlemen, it has been a pleasure. And these are conversations <laughs> that lead to, you know, th that youths, as youths, we need to have. Can I extend exactly. some bad manners? <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> no, 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 bad manners. <laughs> <laughs> Which bad manners? No, I just wanted to say a word of something, yeah. some advice I would like, to, oh. now that I'm on national television yeah, yeah, and there are a lot of youths yeah. watching, yeah. Yeah, cool. I would like to advise young people yeah. that the time for, for, for us to get into these leadership spaces yeah. and political spaces is now. Yeah. Mm. We, may have, we may have our heated arguments, yeah. but at the end of the day, we are on the same page. Yeah. The most important thing is for us to also be on the table. Once right. you are on the table as a stakeholder, and all you need as a young person mm. is your brain. You have the vision and everything. You have the advantage of time. Nobody will ever come to you in your, in your bedroom to take you to a leadership table. We have to step out and show ourselves 
and support each other. Because very true. They say leadership is not given. It's taken. <laughs> Another statement. <laughs> <laughs> Another <laughs> statement. <laughs> That's not democratic. <laughs> that brings us to the end of this conversation right here on Wine in the Morning. It has been a pleasure having you uh, today. My name is Ram Maguko. May God bless you and may God bless the work of your hands. Have a fantastic day. Wine in the Morning continues again tomorrow. Keep it Y254. Keep it Y in the morning. Good to be fair. <laughs>